let's take a closer look at the object complement, which sometimes provides a little bit of difficulty for some students. And we look at some examples here. In number one, everyone thought him an idiot. You have the subject in blue, everyone thought, that's the predicator. Everyone thought him, and him is the, is the object in this case. Now, an idiot, this isn't one more participant, okay? Instead, an idiot tells us about him. And him, as it were, he, has changed because of the thinking that everybody had. So as a result of that thinking, he is changed. And so um, an idiot, in this case, is an object complement. It doesn't post-modify the word he, instead, it tells us how he has changed because of the thinking. Now, if there had not been, uh, if these words had not been here, everyone thought, then this would have been he is an idiot. And in that case, an, an, he is an idiot, and in that case, an idiot would have been the subject complement and he would have been the subject. This is why I've written this here, he is an idiot. The reason being that, in, as in all of these cases here, um, had this been in subject form, then it would have been like this here. Now, let's go on to number two. The whole town wanted the outlaw dead. The whole town, this is the subject, wanted, this is the predicator, so somebody wanted somebody, the outlaw. Now dead, this isn't another somebody or a something. So it's not another object here. Instead, you have the whole town wanted the outlaw. They wanted the outlaw different to how he was. Instead of being alive, they wanted the outlaw dead. So this dead is the object complement. And had this been just the clause by itself, then it would have been the outlaw is dead. So you can see that the object complement behaves similarly to the way the subject complement would have done, had this only been uh, the clause itself, the outlaw, dead. Let's look at three. The board, this is the subject, has made, this is the predicator, him. Somebody has made him. Now, we've got this word which we have to account for manager. So in this case, he has changed. He has changed from becoming just a, an employee to becoming a manager. So because of the action of the board, he has been changed into a manager. So manager here is the object complement. There are a limited number of verbs or should I say, yeah, verbs, uh, the lexical verb, there are a limited number which have this object complement pattern. Um, let's look at one more example whilst we are looking at this. If we go to, um, if we say 3A, and we'll say the voters elected her president. So, as you can see here, you have the voters, these were the doers, the subject, elected is the predicator, her, this is the object, and because of their election, because of their voting, um, they changed her from being an ordinary citizen to be being the president. And in this case, the president is the object complement. Now, sometimes... Uh, People get a little bit confused about um, the difference between a post modifier and an object complement. Now, you might not know, all of you, what a post modifier is just now. We'll be looking at that uh, in the phrase section. Um, however, uh, we'll have a quick look at it here. A post modifier tells us more about the head. So, in this case, you have the subject, the whole town wanted the outlaw dead. Now, 
you can have a pre-modifier to the outlaw. You could have said, for example, the tall outlaw. And then in that case, tall would have been here. This would have been the pre-modifier. Now, who was very violent? This is different to the word dead here because it tells us more about the outlaw. Outlaw is the head, and who was very violent tells us more about the outlaw. This is the post-modifier. It post-modifies after the head. Okay, so this is the difference between an object complement and a post-modifier. An object complement doesn't post-modify the head. It tells us how the, the head, so to speak, has changed. I hope you've found this explanation useful. Mm -hmm.